There are some mediocre games in life that fall between good and bad. That's the definition of mediocre if you were curious. Mid is the term them fuckers around the local schools use. You know, games like Zoop for the Super Nintendo or The Legend of Zelda, any of them. But in the ARPG space, I have yet to find one that is more underwhelming in all ways than Warhammer Chaos Bane. It's the bane of my existence to play this one. <laughs> It's a good joke, put that in the script thing. For real, open a dictionary, emphasis on the dick, and go and find the word blows. In the example section underneath your mother, you'll see a PNG of Chaos Bane. It's just part of its identity. I'd even go as far to say it's one of the least innovative, least interesting, and one of the most repetitive ARPGs I've played lately, which sucks for me because in our quest to play every ARPG ever made, I'd rather have a grand old time instead of a regular old time. Warhammer is a great and interesting fictional series. I know this because I have ears and listen to people who enjoy it as I've never interacted with it once. You'd rather I've experienced personally? Are you under the impression I am able to fucking read? I get all my information as an amorphous blob sucking it into my membranes, and that normally works decently well, but not here as strike one for chaos being. Why does literally no enemy have any kind of name? Like, this little race of people are called the Nurgle. That's amazing, I'd remember that, but apparently the game was made for fans of Warhammer already, and not for people like me who enjoy hitting buttons and killing Nurgles. And the lack of names is a good introductory point to my conspiracy theory, which is that this game was intended to be a phone game, but for some reason became a PC port of Diablo Immortal-esque quality. I say this for many reasons, because the quality is dog piss, dick shit, cocksuck, fuck ass, doo-doo, penis, garbage, take that YouTube censors, let's see you try and stop me. But really, it's not really a hyperbole, me and a good friend played through the whole game together and it crashed in pivotal moments like eight times in one playthrough. Imagine you were playing Diablo 2 and you just killed Diablo but nothing dropped and the quest just bugged out and Tyrael sat there looking at you like, what the fuck are you doing, go kill Diablo, and you couldn't since he was already a pile of bones, so you had to close the game, restart the whole Chaos Sanctuary and repeat what you just did. That wouldn't be the worst, because Diablo 2 is a great game, perhaps the best Diablo. But let's stop beating around the dick. Let's determine if Chaos Bane, the bad game, is possibly the best ARPG ever made. I'll level with you. I played this game a while ago, replayed it recently, and I can't be bothered. This script is going to be written in one day. Actually, no, one hour, one minute, 800 words per second. I'm working overtime to get this video into your earballs and eye holes. I'm going to brain dump all over the place right now. Here it goes. Game is asshole. Balls. Me clever, me write script. Add an extra E. Bobby Kodak sucks dick. Enjoy the video with breakfast, lunch, and dinner in that order. History of RPG Part 2 coming soon. Thanks for watching Minecraft Dungeons soon. No, no. I'm lightheaded and I can't see. Oh, there's piss and shit all over me. <laughs> Gameplay, that's what you want? Okay, you start in town as always, and Teclis, the most powerful wizard in the tri-state area, he doesn't help with anything, just tells whatever common fantasy race you are to go do everything, most of which is rooting around in sewers, and if he's feeling frisky, you're just above ground in stone-colored cities. And really, it's ping-pong time, into the shitter, back to Teclis, and every time you go into a dungeon, it's just a single trail to the end with a million forgettable mobs in the way. They wouldn't be so forgettable if they had names, but I will stop bringing that up. You do this about 35 times, and the game is over. Unless you want to play the post game, uh, I gotta talk about that a little later. Before the wonderful repetition that is the gameplay loop, I'll offer some insight into the only pretty interesting part of the game itself without the skills work. The way the combat systems integrate into the gameplay is that each level you gain a new skill node in this skill page, so you don't pick anything, you just get access to more and more things as you level up. Alongside this, as you level, you gain points that are used to equip whatever skills you'd like, and each unique skill has three separate versions which change either the power, the way the ability works, or just add some more of whatever to the however. So there's some fun to the concept that you can puzzle piece build your own unique skill set together, and since there are passive skills that also add to your character and take from those same points, you can either take a whole bunch of powerful active abilities, or one ability with a ton of passive synergy. This is something I haven't seen done in many ARPGs and it was pretty fun. Plus, you get an entire passive skill tree coinciding this, and the large nodes on this passive skill tree add to your character's ability list, so all in all there's some fun to be had. However, unfortunately, most of the time there isn't a lot of choices you have to make, because you're systematically gaining access to the same abilities but better, so who in the fuck is going to say, do I want the baby ass fireball or the hyper powered mega fireball that takes a humongous flaming shit on everything in the region? It's, it simplifies more than one would like, is what I'm getting at. The enemies and targets, well, they might as well be floating health bars because, as I've said, they have no name, no discernible attack pattern, and they scale to your strength no matter what they are. Basically, fuck them. In combat itself, Chaos Bane employs the age old terrible system of using a weak move to build up energy and then spending your energy in one second to have a one second of fun, good ability usage. I'm taking my stand against this gameplay decision right now. I loathe this. It's the most repetitive, disinteresting way to engage in combat with 1-1-1-1-1-1-2-1-1-1-1-2 attack patterns instead of a management system with dynamic concepts on how to engage and disengage in combat. Oh, dearie me, what a drag having to think about more shit in a role-playing game, the genre for fucking losers and nerds who like numbers unlike the Chad Ridge Racer gamers. What was the point? Oh yeah, RPG stuff going out the window, simplicity a concept which is a fine line tightrope of design because yes, I've said it, Path of Exile is bloated, far too many numbers to the point 
where Einstein would say, this is some bullshit. But then on the other end of the spectrum, having a game require no planning, just conception on what you have to care about. Just pick the green arrow, like, oh, on gear, I'll, I'll just get to that in a second. Gear in this game is also bad, but please let me make decisions that are mistakes. If I budget incorrectly, I like to feel that I can't just drop meteors of massive damage on things because I used a little dinky wand in my pants move. I want to mess up because it makes the moment where I spam meteors of massive damage to engage my pants massively. To make me excited to keep playing, to feel that I'm not wasting my time playing an elaborate clock simulator. I don't want to think, boy, this is getting old, much like this paragraph. I mean, look at this shit. It's massive. It's unending. Also, there's another sin in the ARPG space, and it's having a mobility cooldown button be just better than walking at all times. And in fact, cooldown isn't accurate. There's no cooldown here. Like, take the Slayer Dwarf, hit spacebar, fucking Spider-Man, just like that. I don't like the concept of busy work movement, and I especially dislike it when optimally you should just be smashing the movement key at all times, especially because the game acts like the spacebar mobility is more like the reactionary combat button, but in combat, the Slayer Dwarf just yoinks a target with it and moves one inch, so it's only good for out of combat movement. And if you're just talking about combat, well, it's droll. Every button was kind of made with the intention to be completely viable through the campaign, and the synergies for each skill are pretty apparent, so it's just a matter of being a being who can hit buttons on the keyboard in order to complete the game. Again, the energy builder move is dog shit, and the energy spender move clears the area over and over again. It's just not so exciting. Plus, you might notice as you blow through the various asses around you that a lot of loot is dropping, and surprise, it's another idea from Seer's Amazing Board of Lazy Shit I Hate. I've never referenced this board before, let me just make it real quick, build it, give it a look. Okay, great, here it is. It's got a few things on it already, I'll amend it as I remember the things I hate, but yeah, we have scaling loot and that always sucks dick. I'm not a curmudgeon. Well, actually I am, but I'm not against people having fun, and if make number bigger every two minutes is what you have fun with, then by all means enjoy it, I'm happy for you. But for me, the concept of getting loot is only fun if it's a mega moment, either through great luck or a long wait, but when the game is invalidating the gear I just got a moment ago with something just 5% better constantly, I suddenly loathe your item system. Because it's an RPG, I want to read numbers and go, oh yeah, that's the fattest thing I've seen since my ass, that's incredible. That's not even mentioning the next thing on my amazing board of lazy shit I hate, but scaling enemy difficulty also sucks, and I don't like the feeling of being perpetually the same in an ARPG, let me suck dick or kick dick, either or. Being a middling man in the game world really wears down my enthusiasm. Anyway, the gear itself is ripe with stats that are pretty basic and complemented with green arrows. Yep, that's on the board, you knew it. Plus crit damage, plus damage, yeah, you know, those are good like those. Uh, plus armor piercing on the other hand, no idea what that really means. Sometimes that's like the best stat in any of these games, other times it's useless as fuck. Plus cost reduction, what cost? Could add another word to indicate better as to what it is reducing, but really, I know this is nitpicky, but the point is there's nothing really inspired here. I'm not off my head, rolling on the floor naked, covered in oil because of this. I'm just doing that for fun. Who, what else? The story and setting? All right, why not? Tech List is the only person who knows anything at any point. He directs you to deal with the flavor of the act god that's wreaking havoc, and you deal with their minions one by one until you're, I don't know, satisfied. To be honest, this plot kind of just continues until it doesn't. It feels like an afterthought. My friend has indicated that Tech List is master wizard extraordinaire, and yet he never once does a fucking thing to help you fight these rampaging creatures, so I say we stick his hat up his ass. Is he wearing a Merlin-style hat, right? Let me look it up. Hey, yeah, kinda. Also, this obviously evil asshole is standing next to Techless and bitching at us, eventually turns out to be an evil asshole and betrays the gang. He then dies, what a game. The coolest part of the story is that each independent class is given a unique plot and unique dialogue relating to the circumstances going on. Sadly, they spent the voice acting budget on writing the dialogue, and therefore it's a Pollock painting of voice acting ability. That made sense, right? I don't have time to elaborate the metaphor any more than that. I don't think you get the picture. Oh yeah, the classes, in quotes, because it's more like pick the person rather than pick the class. You have human soldier, high elf mage, dwarf dwarf, archer elf, dwarf engineer, and human hunter, all of which are fun for the whole family. I don't know what I really mean by that. I don't have a point here. Two human Humans, two elves, two dwarfs, have fun, fuck you. In more pressing matters, the game is unstable, crashed like 10 times and froze after boss fights, that was great. Post game, says the voice in my head, okay yeah, we'll talk about the post game, which is sprinkled about for the entire duration of the campaign, gives you access to redoing mission zones with a host of enemies that are stronger. Or climbing a tower with strong enemies, basically it's like PoE mapping, click some buttons, warp to rooms with harder enemies and the rest of the game, have fun, find new stuff, repeat forever. For reasons I've outlined well enough so far, I did not want to explore the game much more than I did, so I didn't really partake in the end game. Sure, you start finding red rarity items and I think you get an even better tier than that, but the game is boring. It's just plainly not that engaging to run around and burn health bars in much of the same fashion you did earlier. Bosses are kind of a shining spot and there's a boss rush-esque endgame mode where you set modifiers and fight the bosses again, but I don't know, many of them were tedious, let alone with geysers of green blasting up around me. There's some extra enchanting stuff available with the gems you find, but it's just like Diablo 3 enchanting. Enough red gems to add crit chance to an item, take the green ones if you're this class, yellow if you're that one. You've seen it, I guarantee. Unless you've never played 
played games before. Maybe you're 68 years old and you just got done paying taxes and I've invaded your YouTube feed and I've sickened you with my weirdity to the point you're frozen in place watching me. Saying a variety of swear words. And if that's the case, thanks for watching. I fucking love you very much. Take care. For everyone else, I would like to confirm with utmost certainty that Warhammer Chaos Bane is not the best ARPG ever made. It's a game. It runs. That's the extent of the compliments I'll offer this product. It's got some of this and some of that. So if you want to hold buttons down for a few nights, feel free to try it. As for me, I got to move on to an old fucker of a game, not akin to the person watching this video. But the next time we meet in this fashion, expect Darkstone, a game made in the Stone Age. But until then, take care. Don't eat your vegetables and stop being named Benjamin. I see you, Benjamin. Fuck you. Much love. Take care. Goodbye.